Foil, it's me, John Year, once again with Hector. How you doing, Hector? Good, man. How you doing? Well, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Um, especially with something coming up like this with uh, San Diego Loyal uh, going to be playing uh, international quote-unquote friendly uh, with uh, Liga uh, MX's first division uh, Cholos de Tijuana obviously are, are our friendly neighbor to the south. So it's going to be a very interesting matchup. Um, you know, this has been coming, you know, it was supposed to be done last year, correct? Yeah, uh, the whole COVID thing threw it off. They were still crossing their fingers to get it done. They they just played it safe. Yeah, I I really want to know um, who put this all together. This is really a great thing. Um, I'm really happy that it was able to get done. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of times with uh, with this type of situation, uh, visas and and stuff like that kind of gets in, into like a problematic mix. Because uh, obviously we're so close to Tijuana, but it's still another country, right? Um, the connection between San Diego and Tijuana is obviously a, a big connection. You know, I would call them, you know, sister cities in essence. Um, so many people have been there that live here. So many people work here that live over there. You know, and that's one of the things I want to get into uh, uh, a little bit later in, in the discussion. Uh, you know, the, the, the turnout that I, I hope this is going to get. But I, I, I've, I've been looking at things in social media. And I haven't really seen too much, but we'll get into it in a minute. So as of right now, uh, again, from the beginning, uh, as I mentioned, uh, San Diego Loyal will be playing Cholos on Saturday uh, this weekend at 5 p.m., I believe, mm -hmm. uh, 5 p.m. So it's going to be an extraordinary match uh, between the two, a uh, historical matchup, uh, friendly, you can call it friendly, you can call it uh you know international friendly whatever but for me it's going to be a battle like wh what's your first thoughts on this on this uh this match against uh cholos and, and sd loyal yeah it'll be definitely a quote-unquote friendly on paper but it's definitely worth like bragging rights for a while because they probably won't play each other for another you know year maybe maybe 2022 but it's definitely like you were saying as soon as loyal was announced what is it officially november of 2019, everybody's like, first thing they were asking, like, when they're gonna play solos, when they're gonna play solos and stuff, and then the whole COVID thing. But yeah, I mean, it's gonna be definitely something that has repercussions, not just in the competitive sense to see, you know, the whole Liga MX, you know, and US soccer, even though it's not an MLS team, but it's, you know, USL is pretty, pretty good too. And uh, I think it'll have like, you know, a good connection in terms of like, not just banter back and forth between like the fans and stuff, and that's another topic by itself. Like, I don't know if the, uh, I'm sure there'll be Sholo fans there. I don't know if it'll be the official, like, supporters group there. But yeah. it'll definitely have a vibe, like, a, like almost like, a, I wouldn't say Copa America, but almost like a CONCACAF tournament kind of vibe, you know? Yeah, I heard on social media that it's it's basically almost sold out. Uh, I, I, haven't took, I haven't taken a look myself to see how many seats are left, but somebody mentioned that on a, uh, uh, social media on Facebook that there's not too many tickets left, which is a really great thing, obviously. Uh, but yeah, uh, this is the first time these two teams are, are meeting. And I was trying to see on social media if I could find any discussion from like their supporters group. Um, what's, what are they called again? I think like... Uh, Mascar 3 or something? Mascar 3 or something like that? I think it's like El Masacre, I think. Masacre right? or something, yeah. I think they might. I'm pretty sure they have more, but again, we're talking here, you know, everyone, because uh, uh, obviously two different leagues, international friendly. Um, I honestly don't follow Liga and Mekis too much, but just to kind of give a little bit of my my uh, um, background in, in following Tijuana, uh, I was following them a little bit of, quite a few years ago because they had they have a lot of Colombian players, and and um, my family's from from Colombia. So I was really paying uh, close attention to some of the Colombian players that were going through their through their roster, and uh, a few of them, um, actually, my uh, uh, my wife met too some of their players um, that played on on, on Cholos. So uh -huh. it, I was trying to kind of get into it, and and you know the whole thing about it was 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 um, San Diego didn't have a team, you know, having Cholos next door. In Tijuana, I was really trying to get into it, um, and I did for a couple for a little for a couple of years, like a year or two. I wasn't really too involved, but I I'm not sure if you recall 
uh, man, it was a long time ago, maybe like 10 years ago, maybe I think when, when uh, Ronaldinho came with Atletico Mineiro from Brazil and for yeah. the Copa Libertadores. Yeah. You remember that? And then, yeah. uh, you know, Ronaldinho, the, the, the big Ronaldinho in Tijuana playing against uh, Cholos in the Copa Libertadores. That for me, I've been following Copa Libertadores since for like 20 years. Mm -hmm. You know, so to have something like Copa Libertadores next door, you know, right here in Tijuana, so close, I went. I didn't get tickets to the match because it was impossible. Yeah. But I went and I ended up, you know, I went with a buddy of mine and we we're trying to get tickets. We couldn't get any. Um, but we we hung out, we hung out outside of Caliente before the match started. So we're hanging out, tailgating with the um with a lot of the of Cholos fans. It was great ambiance, stuff like that. And then actually when the match was over, uh, we were, I don't know how we got in the stadium, but we got in the stadium somehow. I think they <laughs> actually let us in. I don't remember. <laughs> but we went in the stadium and just took pictures and inside the stadium. Obviously the match is over. But, but, um, excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. But I've been trying to fo I'll follow Cholos for a while now, but it kind of dropped off after a while just because, you know, I was, I've been really looking forward to having a team here in San Diego uh, if you know, that's when they, obviously Soccer City came came about a few years after uh, when uh, you know with Atletico Mineiro and Ronaldinho went to Cholos or uh, you know to their stadium to, to play them. So uh, I kind of dropped off following out, you know following them, and obviously San Diego has a team now. So um, I'm obviously not uh, following Cholos. Um, uh, you know, if if I were to say if I'm a Cholos uh, supporter or follower, no, you know, basically there's just a uh, uh, interesting that um, I do kind of pay attention to what they're doing, though, because they, uh, you know, just with like a lot of Liga MX teams, right? There's a lot of South Americans that play in Mexico. So that's where we're going to get to right now is that they have a uh, into the roster in a minute. Yeah. But they have a lot of South Americans on that team. They, they've they been through Argentinian uh, uh, coaches, right? You know, Cholos, yeah. um, obviously uh, Me Mexicano uh, coaches. Uh, but they really, they really like going for South American players and and and, and coaches. Um, uh, what do you think about that, or, or have you followed enough to know a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, I don't follow the names a lot. I mean, I just follow how they do on the standings, obviously. And I know they missed the playoffs um, last season and stuff. They had like a good little run towards the end, but then they flickered off and stuff. I follow them more like more like on their first couple seasons, like their second season where they won the championship. And I think that was when Alejandro Guido was there. I can't, don't quote me on it, but right. he was there for like seven, seven years, dude. So I think he was there when they won it. And yeah, obviously it's got a, you know, a vibe that it's always pulling fans over from, you go with that year when they won the championship, I went down to Cholo Vista to visit my family. Like every other, they had freaking dogs wearing Cholo's jerseys, dude, like pets <laughs> and like birds and shit. Like what the hell? So it's got a following that for sure there. But in terms of the players themselves, like I'll follow, if it's a big name player, I know they made a push for uh, Miguel Herrera when, when the whole fiasco was done with Club America. They tried to hire him, but he didn't. They didn't like settle on a contract or anything. But yeah, there's definitely a, a worth uh, so close a team so close to San Diego, a team worth following, obviously. Yeah. So, so speaking of the of the championship, uh, you were saying that they won. I noticed. I barely noticed it actually today when I was uh, preparing for this that uh, that their logo has that star now. That they're doing that star now, and a lot of for everyone that doesn't know, a lot of teams in South America or, or Central America, or, uh, you know, North America, Mexico, Latin America, pretty much, they uh, they really like putting stars. A lot of teams or a lot of clubs of how many championships they've won. Yeah, right. So I barely noticed this uh, that Club Tijuana is having. They, they put that star now on top, which is you know pretty cool. It's pretty much saying that hey, we've won a championship. Which was great for them because I think they won it, like you said. I think like the second year they're in the top division in, in Liga MX. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, they they get quality players in there. They get really a lot of talented players, and and that, let's actually get into that right now before we go any further. Now, everybody, um, I know SD Loyal. I've had some issues with their app. Their app, I have a real big problem with in regards to having legitimate like. Uh, lineups you know we watch matches and we're looking at the app to see who the lineup is they have it like just all over the place i don't know who's <laughs> doing the st logo app but you'll have like yarrow up front like forward or something like that or, or you know what i mean like uh yeah. um you know something like just off the wall and i'll be looking at at the app and being like what the hell is yarrow playing forward <laughs> like what so 
again with the <laughs> Latin American websites, they're they're I don't know what it is, but they don't update them as often as you would like. Like here in the United States, where for example, you go to a Best Buy or a Walmart, uh, you know, a, a website that it's up to date with the that day's sales, right? Like that. Yeah. Friday or today's Friday or that Friday, we're still on the TV and they update it. So, so I went on the uh, on the website rather, and they only have a few. They only have a few uh, people that are noted in the roster. And when I go on their Wikipedia, now mind you, the Wikipedia page says that it was last updated in, in uh, 2020. Um, their the roster actual Cholos website r- roster. It, I definitely can tell you that they don't they don't have all their players on here, and they signed a few new players, and we'll get into that real quick. So, Hector, let's get into the the goalkeepers. Uh, yeah. And whoever you know, whoever you, you recognize, you know, you can say a quick little comment about them because the majority of the players I don't know who they are. I know I heard about a few from yeah. uh, South American from watching South American, you know, Copa Libertadores and some of the South American leagues. Jonathan so, Orozco stands out, obviously, because he, like I was mentioning, he played for the Mexican national team uh, a couple games. He tw- 2019, the friendly against the U.S., I think it was in New Jersey. You know, he's got a lot of experience. I don't know if he, he'll be the starter for this one. And, uh, yeah, it's obviously one of those guys that, you know, he's been around uh, around the block, shall we say. You know, he's got those freaking frequent flyer miles, but definitely was he's one of those guys that gives you Kind of John Kemp, John Kempen kind of guy. He gives you a sense of security, you know, that he's always going to keep you in the game, kind of. Okay, and then we have Benny Diaz. Um, he's actually uh, an an American. So I'm wondering, do you know who their first their first keeper is? Their first string keeper? I know last season. I can't remember if Orozco was with them last season, but I think I think Benny Diaz is a recent. He doesn't sound to me like he he played a lot of games last season. So I think they're going to be trying out a lot of stuff because, like I said, they. They didn't make the playoffs last season, so they're gonna mix up a lot of you know positions to see. They'll use this game as a friendly, but also like as a potential warmer because Liga MX is gonna be starting up pretty soon in a couple of weeks. So, yeah, so exactly. yeah, it'd be interesting to see what what kind of lineup they throw out there. Okay, and as far as their posted defenders, they have uh, Eduardo Tercero, um, David Barbona, Vladimir Loronia and victor guzman do you recognize any of those players i recognize a couple of them i think they just signed the number three guy a couple they saw it on their on their twitter that they, they made a big deal about his signing or uh, actually el sole tijuana the other guy that covers soccer they were talking about him being a big um you know a, a guy to come in to help him out so yeah i mean i mean a lot like i said i don't follow the players that closely but i think they're gonna throw in a lot of different they're gonna, i don't know how many uh, being an exhibition game a friendly i think they're gonna be kind of lax in terms of how many substitutions they have so pretty much everybody's gonna get a lot of playing time so it'll give a, a coaches a lot of opportunity to see who's who's you know keeping up with their physical abilities and stuff yeah and again these are only they only have four defenders posted so they obviously can't show up at terrell with only four defenders right so yeah yeah exactly <laughs> into a few more players that they signed uh, in this past week or past few days in a minute. So those are the some of the defenders they have uh, posted on their website. And midfielders, uh, Cristian Rivera, uh, I believe he's Colombian. Uh, Jordi Cortizo, uh, Esteban Pave, uh, Junior Sornosa, I believe he's Ecuadorian. Uh, Luis Gamis, uh, Marcel Ruiz. Uh, Ivan Lopez, and I can tell you right now, I recognize Fines. He's an Ecuadorian, really good player. Oh, yeah. Uh, he had a really good run with Ecuador for a while, uh, quite a few years ago. A national um, team? Yeah, the national team. Yeah, I think he re- did oh. really well. Uh, I haven't seen him in play on the national team in a while. Um, you know, some I think they maybe they're going for like a younger, kind of like a younger squad now, Ecuador. Mm-hmm. But he actually does play. He's a pretty good player, and he's a 10, you know, so. Yeah. Uh, He's a, he's a creative uh, uh, midfielder. So we have to watch out for him. SC Lowe's going to have to watch out for Fidel, uh, Fidel Martinez um, if he plays, which I hope he does. That'd be pretty cool seeing him. Uh, that's the Ecuador International right there. Um, gotcha. Any other any players there that you also that you recognize also? No, number 23, I think I recognize. but uh, And the guy from Ecuador, now that you talk about him, uh, he does ring a bell. Those two guys, basically. Yeah, uh, Junior Sornosa, he he's on loan from Corinthians and from Brazil. 
Oh, wow. he's, he's an Ecuadorian player. Um, let me see if I recognize. Uh, don't know really who much any of the other, other players are. So let's get into the forwards. Um, we have Miguel Sansores, Mauro Manotas. He's a Colombian player. Uh, Manotas, yeah, I definitely recognize him, dude. He had a good, pretty good season for them, considering they didn't make it. Yeah, <laughs> man, that last that last name is tripping me out. Manotas is funny. Uh-huh. Uh, if you guys speak Spanish, uh, Manotas, it's a kind of funny term that we could, you know, uh, sometimes it's used for funny different scenarios. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, look that up. And uh Jerson Vasquez, I don't know who that is, and I don't see him. Let me see if I see him on the I don't see him on the Wikipedia. So oh hey, actually I'm sorry. Yeah, he is. He's a, a Mexican player. Um so so again, uh, this is a, a a small roster that they have posted, but I wanted to go back to their their front their front page. They have like four new signees. Okay. Um, and, and they, actually, they actually talk a little bit about who they are. So let's get into that. See right here, th- there's a Bienvenido Misael Dominguez, medio campista. So that's a uh, midfielder. He is, I believe he's Ecuadorian too. Uh, Cholos just love Ecuadorians. I don't know why. Yeah, dude, there's a good connection there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, where is he from? Let me see here. Let me confirm. I'm not sure he's Ecuadorian or not. But I know they have a, oh, you know, I think I'm wrong on that. I apologize. He's, there's another player that's from Ecuador. Um, so we have him that signs uh, the midfielder. Uh, I believe this player is uh, Ecuadorian. I'm sorry, it's uh, Eric Castillo. I guess he okay. was four, um, he came back, but he's um, uh, he's an uh, Ecuadorian player. Uh, he's back on the club, so not really don't really recognize him too much or not sure too much about him or don't don't know too much information about him and then i believe he, uh right here uh, uh jonathan rack uh defensive player that was signed also i saw him on twitter i believe that uh on the cholos twitter oh well okay he's a defense oh he's Ur- uh, uruguayan he's okay Uruguayan player defense so don't recognize him from any south american uh clubs that i that i've seen before um and there's a bienvenido for lucas titi rodriguez so titi rodriguez he's a midfielder um he's a new player signed uh let's see where he's from argentina okay so, and he's a i believe i said midfield player yeah so uh, they, you know again uh as i was mentioning they cholos love south american players so what does this mean right what does this mean uh going up against loyal well we don't have a single south american player on loyal <laughs> so what, what what to expect i can i can already relate to this from experience what what to expect from a south american uh almost ma- you know majority of of their players are from south american what to expect well you can expect a lot of uh uh contact uh it's contact meaning you know they they uh you know they're going to be breathing down your neck you know, ST Loyal, so Blake, uh, they, they, they're going to know who the top players are, you know, Blake, uh, Alejandro Guido, they, you know, and they're going to be breathing down their neck, fouling them, trying to foul. Uh, a lot of South American players, uh, especially Argentinian, Uruguayan, um, you know, they're they're used to just a, a lot of uh, possession, ball possession. Um, so it's going to be a very physical play uh, uh for both sides, I'm assuming because you know SC Low is not going to want to lose. Yeah, Cholo is going to want to lose, and for this ain't going to be no friendly. Everybody, this is going to be a straight up battle. Mm-hmm. You know, neither not one of these teams is, was going to uh, is going to want to lose this, and that's what I wanted to ask you. Was um, I was thinking at the beginning, well, this is a friendly. Do you, do I think that Landon's going to want to rest? Maybe like Blake or Alejandro Guido or some of these other first team players, and I I think no. You know, what do you think? No, I think they'll all get some playing time. That's why I brought up the thing about see how many substitutions they, each team gets. I'm sure if they have six or seven, I mean, they can throw them in for like 20, 30 minutes a pop and get some good looks. I, it wouldn't surprise me if like Cholos throws in some of their U20 guys because I know they, they play with San Diego State every year, or a couple times a year. The, their U20s play the San Diego State men's team. So it'll be a good time for Cholos to like prepare for the Liga MX season and also get, you know, 
kind of their forces básicas kind of up to par kind of thing but it's not it's not a game you want to lose but it's definitely not a game you want to have in, injuries you know i mean it's still like you know it's not going to help you out in the standings it'll be more for bragging rights it'll be more for creating a vibe and then the level of competition landon hates to lose and obviously a liga mex team would hate to lose to any level of a us team so it'll be it'll be an interesting matchup and i think that's funny you brought that up a second ago i didn't realize that was, um, there's no south american players on like uh, loyal i think the closest thing they got is like yair yair Jean from panama from central america so uh yeah, so that's a trip, man. I, I wish they would like expand more, like maybe not like go all cholos, but like make make a little different le different level of flavors there, you know? Yeah, and Yair Yair is no longer on the team, unfortunately. I don't. There's no news of what happened to him. I, I should probably look into that and see if he's back in Panama, which is most likely the case, um, because I believe he was on loan too. I believe he was just on yeah. loan. He was on loan from Costa del Este, or so. So so. Yeah, so the connection with SD Loyal, there's not really much of a connection with any South, you know, South American country or club. Um, obviously, a lot of people know about the connection that SD Loyal or Landon already has now, basically Landon Donovan, right, uh, with Lincoln City uh, over in England. So um, I'm predicting, I'm seeing that uh, Landon could potentially bring a lot more players from the UK. You know, obviously we have uh, Blake, uh, Adams, uh, Matt, yeah, so I'm not really seeing. I and I and I've already talked to some of the you know uh, leadership in in SD Lowell in regards to getting some South American players. You know, we have a lot of Brazilians here in San Diego. There's a uh, Argentinians, Chileans. Oh yeah. Oh, so we don't have it yet. But uh, what well, the whole thing I wanted to say was that this is a very this this is why this match is going to be very interesting to watch. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna love seeing this game because. Again, this is a Liga MX's first division team um, playing their their uh, cross border, uh, you know, other team. You know, I don't want to say rivals yet, you know, I guess because they haven't played each other before. Yeah. But uh, but it's it's full of South American talent. Obviously, Liga MX's first division, um, and they're going to play against SD Loyal at Torero Stadium. So it's going to be a great matchup. Um, let's get into the predictions real quick because I want to get into some other uh, off the field stuff. Uh, what do you predict the results going to be? I don't think. I mean, I think the first five or ten minutes are gonna set set the tone right off the bat. I think we're gonna know how serious both teams are gonna take it. I think they're gonna take it serious, like you're saying, and there's gonna be a lot of chippiness. So the priority for the each player, for each coach, I think it'll be like no injuries and hopefully get out with the win, just for the fans, you know, their their home fans, and I'm sure Cholos for the same for their visiting fans. But uh, I think it'll be close. I, I'm calling it. I don't want to flake out on it, but I'm calling it like a two-two tie on this one. <laughs> yeah, great prediction. I was, I was, I'm calling a tie. Also, um, I'm expecting goals. Definitely, I don't, I don't see like there's no some of those Cholos players are gonna have to prove themselves to be on the first team for one. Uh, SD Loyal, we would pretty much already know who, actually, who Landon Donovan wants on his first team or who his first team is. But this is just more of like just a an event, right? For SD Loyal, just an event of of playing against Cholos. <laughs> So I, I want to see, a, a, uh, obviously, an SD Loyal win. But, again, this doesn't matter to us. and, and We're not going to move up in the rankings in regards to USL. We're not going to go down on the rank. This is basically a friendly, but it's going to be more than a friendly for obvious reasons. There's going to be a lot of Cholos fans there from what I understand. Um, but I'm, I am really wanting to see a, a good game, and I'm predicting a tie also. Goals uh, or what the score, you know, potentially can be. I feel like a two-two again. How you just mentioned is something that uh, uh, is, you know, what I'm predicting. So speaking speaking of the event, right? Um, before we close out here, um, obviously Cholos are right, you know, right next door. There's a lot of Cholos fans here that cross the border to go to Cholos games. Uh, and again, I mentioned in the beginning of the discussion that um, there's not too many seats available, to my understanding. So there's going to be Cholos fans there a lot. Um, yeah. I haven't seen again. I was following social media, trying to get an idea what the talk is about, what they're planning on doing, if they if they're going to organize in any way in regards to setting up a tailgate or certain way. Um, are they going to be having a pre match? Uh, you know, anything at all? I haven't heard of anything. Uh, so we'll see. I don't know how many. Uh, I I don't know how many Cholos fans are going to show up, but I'm expecting a really good amount. I don't know if their supporters group is going to be out 
or if they're going to be in um, an organized to where they're going to be in a certain section, all of them, or they're going to be scattered. Uh, I'm unaware of that also. Uh, it could potentially even be that not too many, not too many supporters even show up in that, you know, maybe, you know, they're not interested. But I highly doubt that because I've seen Cholos here uh, is going to be something that a lot of, uh, you know, fans are going to want to, they're going to want to go see that, right? Yeah. Have you they've heard been any- dying, They've been dying for a year, dude. Like, I know everybody got depressed when they canceled it. I mean, you could see it coming. Though. If they canceled it, you know, it was right after the Tacoma game, I think they announced that there wasn't going to be a Cholos game. But, but yeah, it's one of those things that it builds bridges and it kind of like, it also foments the rivalry in terms of, you know, maybe there'll be after this, there'll be a Cholos presence, like at the San Diego Loyal home games and vice versa. They can have tents. I don't know, maybe cre- create a collaborative relationship that, foments that friendly rivalry you know yeah yeah oh yeah i'm very excited to see uh how this event turns out i'm hoping for the best in regards to having to be just an amazing atmosphere by cholos fans um who obviously are well organized because you know they've been around for for quite a few years now and obviously uh, uh the san diego Loyal supporters uh are already beginning their their season of organization and, and getting established as a supporters groups with the several that are already there with, uh, you know, with Chavos, locals and rainbow loyals and stuff. Um, I think it's going to be an amazing event. And I'm just, again, uh, I just hope the connection grows and we can play them every year and it just becomes a thing, you know, like a, yeah, like a border cup type thing. Um, and, and we'll, 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 you know, we'll see what happens, but I, I really give props to uh, whoever put this together. Um, I think it's going to be great, uh, and, and we'll see how it goes. You know, so yeah. um, any any comments, any uh, anything on your mind in regards to uh, uh, this event? This no, I'm definitely if it's one. There's the one game that I'm gonna not be afraid of the Delta variant. It's gonna be this one. I'm 80 percent sure I'll be at the game. You said you're gonna go to the game, right, with your kid? I think you said. Uh, I'm planning on going with my with my kid. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I'll probably see you there. I'll be walking the back. I don't want to say like in the press press box you can't see anything you will probably be trying to find a seat with you guys or something but yeah it's definitely an atmosphere you can't miss because it's if it's only once a year you got to take advantage of it you know it's like the score is important but more it's more about the exhibition itself and just like have having fun and creating those relationships those cross-border relationships you know exactly because this is the closest team that san Diego has in regards to a uh, liga mekis team um there's no other there's what's the closest other team besides um cholos i know um in mexico Lan- no in regards to uh, liga mx i don't oh, know what yeah. other, i don't know the closest other team that's closest to the border on, at least on this side of you know the west um I yeah think- there was nothing in baja there was going to be ensenada fc in liga balompia but that shit went under like horribly you know fast so you remember that- everybody yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, remember everybody that uh, SD, or, or I'm sorry, uh, Landon Donovan, he used to play for Leon, right? Club Club yeah. Leon. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm not sure where, how far that is down there, but, you know, maybe. Yeah, it's pretty protect- far. It's like also like south, like south of Mexico City. Yeah, okay. So who knows if that could potentially ever be an opportunity too for Leon to, cl- you know, to come to San Diego. But but this is it, everybody. This is what everybody wanted um, to play a big club. You know, people were, I think, uh, on Twitter – uh, as uh, Guesty Loyal put out that, you know, who else do, do people want to see in regards to playing in a friendly? And obviously Cholos is what a lot of people wanted and we got it and, and we're going to get it, right? Well, the events this weekend, um, and that's going to be great. A lot of people were saying, L, you know, LAFC, LA Galaxy, um, but this is the first uh, club, everybody, top-notch first division club that ST Loyal is going to play against. So this is going to be great. Like, I'm really excited about this um and potentially you know obviously hope this, hopefully this happens every year and we'll see how this grows and maybe in the future uh potentially a first division team from you know from uh, uh england or maybe in the cent- uh, central american country or you know panama obviously we play costa del este uh so hopefully in the future we can you know expand on these and play uh uh international friendlies yeah, Sandy, the next one, maybe San Diego Low can go down to TJ. They can switch off every year. You know, you never know what you can do with this. Oh, well, yeah, that'd be really, I'd be, I'd be, yeah, I would really enjoy going to that stadium. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so there you go. I am done. Uh, how about you, Hector? Any uh, last comments? Pretty good. Yeah, I can't wait for the game. It'll be like, there's, I think after this one, they got Orange County, right? So it'll be like a good, like, it's good that they have something in the middle between 
right. what you know sacramento the ending to that one that kind of sucked and then orange county so that's what keep them on their toes yes and just to end everybody the obviously the matches this weekend uh i was hoping to get somebody from uh, the cholo supporters group um does tonight unfortunately that couldn't happen uh, due to some uh, differences in, in scheduling but i want to get someone on for the match reaction um and then kind of get that different input so hopefully that'll happen so stay tuned for that and with all that i'm done all right hector thanks everybody all right, so go loyal go loyal